A violent explosion has just occurred on the surface of the sun. A solar flare is expected to impact the Earth in minutes. The accompanying CME is sending over a billion tons of mass hurtling towards the Earth at over 300 miles per second. The solar storm has released the energy equivalents of more than a billion nuclear weapons. Is this how Earth as we know it ends? Well, probably not, but maybe. It gets complicated, so let's break it down. As you likely know, Earth isn't the only heavenly body to have weather. With the aid of specialized telescopes, equipment, and satellites, we can see just how active the sun is. The sun is constantly evolving through swirling gases and eruptions. Its level of activity actually cycles as well. This change has a predictable pattern too. That pattern is called the solar cycle. What is the solar cycle? The sun cycles between two phases. One cycle is more active and the other is less active. The sun's solar cycle lasts approximately 11 years and it will include both the peak and the trough in that 11 year period. During the peak of the solar cycle, the sun will have lots of sunspots and solar storms. Our last solar cycle hit its lowest point of activity around 2019 to 2020. The sun's activity level is expected to grow until it hits its peak in July of 2025. What are sunspots? The surface of the sun is a balmy 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit, which seems absolutely pleasant compared to the 27 million degree temperature at the core of the sun. Sunspots are caused by locally increased magnetic fields on the surface of the sun. They appear in pairs with opposite magnetic charges. Sunspots are seen as dark spots on the sun. They're about the size of Earth and are 6,500 degrees Fahrenheit, nearly 4,000 degrees cooler than the rest of the sun, making them appear darker. What are solar flares? A solar flare is an intense burst of electromagnetic radiation that typically originates from sunspots. These flares produce the largest explosions in our solar system and can last anywhere from minutes to hours. They're monitored by both the optical light and the x-rays that they emit. What is a coronal mass ejection, or CME? CMEs are violent releases of gas and magnetic fields. A CME can contain millions of tons of matter speeding away at millions of miles per hour. This often happens with flares, but can also occur on their own as well. When the sun goes through a cycle, it goes through both a solar maximum with lots of sunspots and solar activity, and a solar minimum with very few sunspots and very little solar activity. When you have more sunspots, you also end up with more solar weather in the form of solar flares and CMEs. Tracking so far? Okay, good. Now how does that affect our lives? It really doesn't, at least not in a way that most of us notice. All of these solar storms are blowing up and hurtling tons of mass out into outer space and into our planet, and it really only affects a small percentage of people on Earth. Earth's atmosphere was designed to protect us from much of the harmful effects of solar weather, and most of us won't notice anything, even from the most extreme storms. Who will notice the effects of solar weather? Some of the occupations most affected by solar weather are power plant operators, radio enthusiasts, communication specialists, astronauts, and space agencies. Minor to moderate solar storms can cause fluctuations in power grids, electrical charges to build up on long pipelines, block out radio transmissions, increase radiation exposure to astronauts, and even change the flight characteristics of orbiting satellites. While we may not personally notice it, solar weather can cause real-world impacts. One of the biggest real-world threats is to satellites. When a solar storm hits the Earth, our planet's atmosphere expands, which causes more air resistance or drag to the satellites. Satellites in low-Earth orbit, like the International Space Station, the Hubble Telescope, and the SpaceX Starlink satellites are affected the most. Just last year, a solar storm resulted in SpaceX losing 40 of their 49 satellites during launch, costing them an estimated $50 million. During periods of low solar activity, satellites in low-Earth orbit may only have to boost their orbit about four times a year. During periods of high solar activity, it may be required as often as every two to three weeks just to maintain their orbit. Increased drag isn't the only effect though. Some solar storms require astronauts in the International Space Station to delay spacewalks and even shelter in a more shielded room. Okay, so a few people have to adjust some dials and astronauts can't go outside and play during a solar storm. What about the really big ones though? Do those actually cause problems that we would notice? Here on Earth, solar storms can cause extra charges to build up on surfaces like long power lines and pipelines. In 1989, a solar storm resulted in a blackout that lasted for nine hours, impacting six million people. On August 4th, 1972, a solar flare caused several of AT&T's long-distance transmission lines to fail. Oh, 
and that storm also triggered the detonation of approximately 4,000 sea mines, all of which were magnetically controlled. All of these events are relatively minor compared to the largest recorded solar storm that the Earth has ever witnessed, the Carrington event. September 1st, 1859, Richard Carrington observed two bright white spots over a large patch of sunspots. The next day, the sky erupted with brilliant auroras all over the world. Residents of the Bahamas, Jamaica, El Salvador, and Hawaii were in awe of the beautiful phenomenon never before seen so far south. It bombarded the Earth with the power of 10 billion nuclear bombs. Along with the beautiful auroras came some alarming effects. Telegraph systems throughout the world went haywire. Many telegraph machines were shooting sparks, shocking operators, and even setting the telegraph paper on fire. The amount of energy hitting the Earth was so strong that telegraph transmissions could go through without being hooked up to electricity. Thankfully, the Earth has not experienced another solar storm like that since. If the Carrington event had happened even just a few decades prior, we would have only noticed the beautiful auroras. Our reliance on technology has grown exponentially with each passing year. The resiliency of today's technology against a similar event remains untested. When should we be alarmed? Okay, so solar storms aren't something to worry about until they are. How do we know when we should be concerned and when we can ignore the clickbait? Solar weather can be measured in scales similar to what we use for earthquakes, tornadoes, and hurricanes. First off, you have the K-index. This measurement is to characterize the magnitude of geomagnetic storms and their disruption of Earth's magnetic field. In a nutshell, 5 and under is basically fine, 7 gets a little iffy, and 8 and 9 are bad because, well, they're shown in red. Solar flares are classified, well, into um, classes. These classes range from the smallest to largest in alphabetical order. We have classes A, B, C, and as you've probably guessed, the next two classes are M and X. Classes A through C really don't matter or affect anything on Earth. Class M is also called class major. An X class is the most extreme flare. The severity of each class is often further specified by adding a number onto the end of it, from 1 to 9. Unless it's an X class, and in that case, the numbers just keep going. How do we know how much it will impact us? Well, that's where the NOAA Space Weather Scale comes into play. It's shown as three boxes next to each other and measures three things. Each one deals with a slightly different part of solar weather. First, we have a geomagnetic storm scale, then the solar radiation storm scale, and finally, radio blackout scale. Each one is measured on a scale of one to five, where G1 is minor and G5 is extreme. It works the same way for the other two. Anything at three or less will go unnoticed by almost everyone. The fours may cause some minor problems, but the fives can definitely have noticeable impacts. We're going to cover the worst case scenarios and tell you how often they occur. Geomagnetic storms. G5 storms can cause widespread power problems, including potential grid collapses and blackouts. Transformers may be permanently damaged. Satellite navigation could be poor for days, and their auroras could be seen as low as Florida and southern Texas. These happen about four times every solar cycle, which, if you remember, is 11 years. Solar radiation storms. Extreme solar radiation storms can cause high levels of radiation exposure to astronauts and even passengers and crew on high-flying aircraft. It can also render satellites useless. These occur less than once every solar cycle. Radio blackout scale. Extreme R5 radio blackouts can completely block high-frequency radio transmissions on the sunlit side of the Earth, resulting in the loss of marine and aviation communications. These happen less than once every solar cycle. So, do we need to panic every time there's a massive solar storm on the sun? No. Just because a solar storm happens doesn't mean it will hit the Earth. The sun, being a sphere, is throwing out solar flares and CMEs in all directions. They have to shoot directly towards Earth to affect our planet. How can we prepare if one is heading our way? Basic disaster prep works just as well in this situation. Preparing for power outages, loss of communication, and having a two-week supply of shelf-stable food and water will put you well ahead of the curve. Communicating contingency plans with your family and friends can also be a good idea. As we head into the peak of this solar cycle, we can take comfort knowing that most solar weather is harmless. In the vastness of space, our fragile lives exist in the only few miles of a planet capable of supporting us. The sun, the moon, our atmosphere, and the planet's magnetic field 
All are working together in perfect harmony down to the smallest decimal. The creator of the Auroras has left no detail to chance. As always, thanks for watching. Red Sky Ready.